So in front of us is the illustration, uh, the same illustration, but it is showing the, uh, the male urethra. Okay. First of all, I want you to focus on these two drawings. It's a comparative drawing. This is the male urethra. By that, we can like we can we can easily figure it out because here is the prostate gland, which is not present in the female, and the length of the uh, the male urethra is it's almost 18 to 20 uh, centimeters, as compared to the female urethra, which is very short, uh, like roughly uh, two to four centimeters long. Okay. So this is a comparison, and it's a, it, it's a coronal section through the uh, perineum, pelvis and perineum, okay? Uh, we are viewing the urethra from front. Now come back to this illustration, and we are already oriented that this is the anterior wall, the pubic symphysis, and this is the peritoneal cavity, uh, which is, or the per peritoneum, pelvic peritoneum, which is covering the bladder just from the top or the superior surface. And here is the seminal vesicle at the back of the bladder and the prostate, half of the prostate gland is visible. And here is the urethra and we already know that the urethra starts from the neck of the urinary bladder on top of the prostate. When it enters the prostate, that's the prostatic part of urethra or you can say the second part of urethra which is the widest part. And it has a, like a central projection which is like a colliculus, it's known as seminal colliculus, and this is the urethral crest in the midline, okay? So the, the ejaculatory ducts and also the ducts, minute, minute ducts of the prostate gland, they are 30 to 50 in number, all of them, they open up into the borders of the urethral crest, okay? That's why the, the prostate urethra is the widest. So then, then comes the, the urethra, it just passes like uh, through the uh, uh, perineal region, okay? The perineal membrane. So that, that part is known as the membranous part of the urethra, it's the narrowest part. And uh, it, you can see over here, it's been surrounded by the transverse perineal muscles, the deep uh, transverse perineal muscles. And then it emerges out of the, the uh, you know, uh, perineal, membrane or the UG, UG diaphragm, urogenital diaphragm, and then it enters the bulb of penis, okay? So this hole is the perineal region, and the, 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 the penis and the scrotum, they are the part of the superficial perineal space or superficial perineal pouch. So this region is the deep perineal space or perineal pouch. So membranous part of urethra traverses through the perineal, uh, deep perineal space and then emerges into the, in the mid of the bulb of penis. So that is the bulbar part of urethra. Then it, it, it crosses the, uh, you know, the shaft of uh, penis is the spongy part of urethra and the distal part will go down till the tip of the penis. Okay, so these three parts, the bulbar, spongy, and distal parts of urethra are known as the penile components. They are the penile, this is the penile urethra, which is the longest among all five. Okay, the prostatic first is the neck of the bladder, the urethra started, it's, it's the beginning of the urethra, the prostatic urethra, which is the widest, and it receives the ejaculatory ducts, and also the ducts of the prostate gland. gland. Then the membranous urethra, which crosses the UG diaphragm, and then the penile urethra starts from the bulbar part of urethra. Okay, bulbar, spongy, and distal. 